Ooh, so it's starting to record. I just wanted to record this as part of the TTC journey because I always came into this journey from a place of just trying to really, for lack of a better word, to try not to get into the emotions of all of it but to try to kind of understand. And one of the things I noticed in a lot of the job, in the postings for the TTC community is that there was a lot of language like failed, didn't work, didn't take, um, a lot of raw emotion, which was very, very justified. And I also really did break down after my IUI cycle two, um, process but I was thinking about well but I still kept going into kind of like that pragmatic sense of like instead of using those words is there something happening what is actually happening and I'm gonna switch hands here because my hands getting tired but I'm glad I did that because in trying to kind of understand what was going on with my body the relanguaging kind of helped me get rejuvenated for what is to come. So what I mean is when a cycle doesn't work and you have a condition, like in my case, it is based on age, diminished ovarian reserve and AMH. But for other people, regardless of age, they might have diminished ovarian reserve or another situation that can happen to them. Regardless of that situation happening, understanding what the body's response is can really help. So like for my case, what I learned very quickly is that diminished ovarian reserve, low MH is a result of count, the number of eggs and quality. So sometimes a cycle doesn't take because of those things. In my case, hypothetically, age can sometimes affect and age sometimes means quality because for me specifically my mh is a little bit higher for my age but quality is also an issue just because you have a lot of eggs doesn't mean that the quality of those eggs so in the iui cycle two the quality of eggs that i had could be a factor so that kind of helped me a lot because then i kind of was able to then look at more aggressive protocols like IVF, and also understand why people had more than one IVF cycle or why people have two or why people have three. And I think in your planning, that can kind of help because for example, if you do IVF, depending on the number of eggs that they get, you increase your chances of getting a quality egg. And depending on the percentage of that chance is the reason why people get into the second one or the third one. So I think it helped me. I don't know if that can help you guys too in terms of just understanding and not making my body feel bad and, and really made me understand that maybe my body was doing the best that it was doing based on the protocol. So yeah, so what's next for me actually is my doctor did say that I should still go ahead with IUI3 as we discuss future options. And so I'm going into it uh, knowing exactly what the case might be. Now, what's interesting is she did increase a medication, which might also increase the follicle count. And again, who knows, that might then be able to bring out a quality um, a quality follicle that could work. So that's kind of what we're looking at. So just wanted to share that with you real quickly. And if you're on the TTC journey, I wish you best of luck and we'll see what happens in mine. I'll be sure to share with you my updates. Bye.